Okay, good morning. It's uh, Monday morning, and it's uh, oh, quarter to ten in the morning. And got the big, big green fast pack up on the lift, and I'm going to try to get it ready to run. Let's see if I can get it started. Looking good. The seat looks good. It does. It really does. Okay, now I've got the side cover on. I made the latch assembly. I'll show you how it works. There we go. <clears throat> now it slides forward and off. I'll put that down over here. This is the assembly I made for the latch to go into. Uh, it's not beautiful, but it certainly does the job. And uh, now I'm going to undress the bike and start working on getting it started. So I'm going to take the seat off, put it on the wall over there, storage, put the side cover with it, and see what happens when I start trying to start the bike. Here we go. All right, well, because the bike has been sitting off to the side for so long. Um, I, I've got it hooked to the battery charger. I'm going to top off the battery. And while I do that, I'm going to pull the carb off and go ahead and preemptively go through the carb and make sure that nothing's gotten clogged up while the bike uh, has been sitting waiting for the seat. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Okay, now I've got to say, I know that a lot of people really don't like the whole idea of putting a single Makoni on a Norton, or basically any bike, or even Makonis on any bike. But in less than five minutes, I undid two hose clamps. I'm getting ready to take the cap off. Come on, look at that. I can take the cap off. And folks, I got the carbonizer completely off the bike. Look at that. All I have to do is take this tube off. You can't beat that with a stick. To take the two amyls off of there is just grief. Trying to get the Allen wrench in there. Oh, it's just a pain in the butt. So, you got to admit, taking a single Makuni off for checking is a whole lot easier than taking two amyls off for checking. Just my opinion, not an argument. I like single Makunis. Okay, I've got the carburetor off. I also, I also took the um, gas line assembly off. I don't like the way I did it last time, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to redo that. In the meantime, over here, I've got the uh, tank draining because I sniffed the gasoline. And um, it just sort of smelled weird. So I'm going to drain both sides and uh, put fresh gasoline in there. Okay, back from lunch. This thing's been on the charger for about two hours, two hours plus. I noticed over here, I don't, first of all, I don't, I don't think this engine's ever been run since it was rebuilt because it's, I, I looked inside the um, spark plug hole and everything is just clean as a whistle. Um, this is the supply line for the oil and you can see oil in it. This is the return line and there is no oil in it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put about six ounces of oil down inside the engine. I'll do that by putting it into the rocker uh, cover here and letting it drain down just so that there's six ounces of oil in the sump when I go to kick it over. And uh, maybe we'll even see it coming up the return line when I'm kicking. Or maybe not. Let's see if we can't get it started. Okay, reinforcing my um, thought that the engine has not been run is um, that's awfully clean. And over here, that's completely dry. It's very pretty. 
Got some custom valve keeper covers there. Valve spring covers. Huh. That is a dry engine. Okay, so I'm going to put some oil in it now just to get some oil in the sump. All right, I've checked for spark. I've got good spark. I drained out the old gas and put in fresh gas. I took the carburetor apart, cleaned it all out, and have just filled the bowl with fresh gas by turning on the gas. Um, put six ounces of oil into the rocker box so that it would drain down into the sump, so that you'd have splash oil into the sump when I kick it over. I do not expect this bike to start. I think I remember that Kevin and I did a lot of kicking on it, and uh, it wouldn't start. So I'm going to try kicking it two or three times, frankly, until I get tired, and see what happens. Maybe I'll get some action. Maybe I won't. We'll see. He is on. Our little choke. There's a choke in here somewhere. There it is. Our little choke. Okay. That was fun. Okay. That was fun. That's as much as I can do. Getting a bad case of Norton knee. I can't kick a bike that this tough that many times anymore so i'm going to uh double check the ignition timing make sure that it's exactly correct we've got spark so it's a matter of do we have spark at the right time so that's what i'm going to do i'm going to put the bike up in the air and double check Double check the timing, the static timing. Make sure we did it right when we were working on this last. That's it right now. All right, uh, that was fun kickstarting the bike, trying to kickstart the bike. Uh, my knee, my right knee is giving out. I can't really kickstart hard to start bikes more than you know half a dozen times before i have to quit so i used that up on this bike i got no joy at all no pop back no attempt to start no indication it wanted to start um i got good gas flow the carburetor's clean jets are all cleaned uh got good ignition got good spark i, che I che tested that if you look right here i'll show you that the timing mark is inside a little hole. I'm going to zoom you up into there so you can maybe see that. Norton uses this upper hole. Triumph uses the lower hole because of the direction of rotation. If you look into that little hole, you can see the white 
Let's see if I can make this thing focus down. Actually, you can see it better now than you could with the light. There's the, uh, the white mark on the um, rotor. So let's go back over to the other side. And I'll show you that the timing is set on compression. And the timing mark is exactly and precisely at 28 degrees. Right there. You can see it in the center. Right there at 28 degrees. So the timing is set. The ignition is good. The carburetor is clean. Compression uh, bro broke my leg. Uh, we've got air, we've got compression, we've got fuel, we've got spark. All the things necessary for the bike to run. And the spark appears to be at the right point, right time. Um, but I've used up my knee. I can't kick it anymore today. Maybe I can kick it some tomorrow. Or maybe it uh, will be set aside until Kevin gets back and puts his uh, 40 or 50 pounds more weight than I have on that Kickstarter and kicks it through. Once we get the bike to pop, uh, we will have made some um, progress. So right now um, I've got a no-go, and that's where I'm going to leave it for the day.